Hi guys. Thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Um let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and what you're about to do. Lord God, teach us by your spirit today. Show us by your loving arms today what what you want from us, want for us. God, sometimes you just want to walk with us. Um, sometimes the purpose of things is not for anything we can gain, but for to show us who you are, God. In today's sermon, show us who you are in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, guys. Today's sermon is called The Master Recycler. The Master Recycler. Um, I, I recycle in my in my house. Like, I get the ladies that I work with to put the bottles in the recycling, to put the proper paper bags into to the recycling, to um, put the proper things in the recycling, because I believe in recycling. And when I was looking up recycling, on Google it said to, um, it takes something old, take something used, and make something new out of it. And he and they said um, sometimes it uses the old. Sometimes it doesn't use the whole thing, but it takes properties of the recycled thing to create uh, something new. And um, I was thinking about what what God often does, at least in my life. Um, I was listening to uh, Anita Phillips, and she was saying some really great things. Uh, for your information, I was listening to... Um, Carl Lynn's podcast and uh, called Lights On. You can you can get it on YouTube. Um, you can get the full cup podcast there on YouTube. Or if you can afford it, um, you can you can get it on the B side app. Which is you can get the basement from Tim, from Tim Ross there as well. You can get a show called The Deep End uh, by uh, the hip hop artist Lecrae, and everything. And sometimes with some stuff for YouTube, they have to cut it out because it's sensitive. But for the B side app. You don't get, they don't have to cut it out. So you get the full thing unedited. It's great if you can afford it. If not, you can also, you can get um, the full thing on YouTube. You can get it all, some programs on YouTube. I know with Carl. He uploads the full thing onto YouTube. Uh, with the basement, they only upload about 30 minutes when it's usually about two hours of good stuff. So um, the other day, it was um, uh, um, I saw that Dr. Phillips 
my girl Dr. Phillips was on um, the uh, was on with um, uh, with uh, Car- Carl Lenz and Laura Lenz and uh, so I Before I watched that interview, I I went back and saw an interview of her being in the basement uh, with Tim Ross. That interview was awesome. That interview was over t- over two hours, I think, two hours and six minutes. And then I went to the latest interview with her and Car- Carl Lenz. And she was talking, and she said some. She said a lot of really good stuff. Um, uh, and she was talking about pain, and how we, how we as humans, uh, need a reason for our pain, and we say God's working something out of this. And she said. And she said, um, sometimes pain is just pain. Sometimes it hurts just because it hurts. Sometimes you don't need to find a reason. You just need to let it hurt and not run from it. And I said, I sat back and thought about that. And I said, it's not that I disagree with it, but I think, uh, in my life, there's been more. Yes, um, sometimes life just hurts. And Christians are afraid to deal with hurt. They're afraid to sit in pain. They're afraid to, you know. And they say, God's going to get me out of this. Well, what if he doesn't? Or this is going to be worth something. Yes, but what if you don't see it? Then then what are you going to do? Sometimes life starts lifing. But as she said that, I thought in my own life, not that that's wrong. We need to sit in pain. We need to deal with pain. We need to face that pain as a part of life. But I believe that um, sometimes God recycles, um, uh, uh, takes our pain, recycles it, and makes something new. I, I, like, in my life, everything that I've gone through, everything that I'm going through right now, it's not, it's not only going to be worth something. The lessons I'm learning will benefit people. The financial lessons I'm learning, how to save my money, how to live on ODSP. For, for those of you who don't live in Ontario, um, Canada ODSP is basically government assistance. So God is teaching me how to give in that, how to manage that. And so, and I I do make mistakes sometimes, but even in the mistakes, God is teaching me. And God is showing me that when he takes me to a level where I could do something about it, I know how it feels to be broke. I, so, so I can speak from a place of experience. And um, it's not that God causes pain for you to learn things. No, but he takes 
whatever is there and uses the broken pieces, the pieces we like and the pieces we don't to create something new. He's the master creator. He's, he's the master creator. He's the cre- creator of all the heavens and the earth. He's the master creator. And not that um, he needed your, your son to die to you, use your pain for something. No. But now that, you're, now that your child has died, he's going to use all the pieces. Because... Um, I believe that sometimes life is life, um, but I believe that he doesn't waste a thing. That's why I call this sermon the Master Recycler, because I believe he, he's the master at, at, at taking something used something beaten up and making it new. He does. So everything that I'm learning in this stage now is going to be used in my life to help somebody else or to be good for someone else. He doesn't waste pain, not only pain, but um, but the good stuff too. Let's not forget about that. He uses the good stuff, he uses the bad stuff, he uses it all to create something. And it may not taste good at the time, it may not feel good at the time, and he may not cause it, but when But since it's there, he'll use it. He'll use it for his glory. Because I believe that everything we're going through, good, bad, or ugly, everything, although he doesn't cause it, um, he will use it as a master recycler. And in that, he will create something new about it. And when I was looking up recycling for this sermon, when I Googled recycling, he, um, they said for some, for some things, for some recycling, they use the whole thing again, but sometimes they only use properties, or they only use parts or certain things again, so sometimes he may not use the whole thing, he may not use the whole thing He may not use the sadness, may not use the depression or whatever, but will use uh, the lessons that you made, that you gained through that, from that person uh, to, to make you a more empathetic person, to shine some light on what he's capable of. Um, I know um, uh, a family member, I lost a a very close family member in 2017. And that family member, every time you would get off the phone with him, he would say, I love you, I love you, I love you. And then when when he died, it was devastating. But now I find myself saying, whenever I get off the phone with uh, 
my family member or someone that means everything to me. I I say I love you or you mean so much to, to me. This family member taught me that. So his death wasn't good, but what I took from him was his kindness, his givingness, his lovingness. Not lovingness, but his his loving nature. And I think when we go through things like a death or like a breakup, we often forget what's good about that person. And then we get stuck in the death. We get stuck in the tragedy. And yes, we should grieve the tragedy. Tragedy. Grieve the loss. Grieve all that stuff. But we should also remember the good parts of that relationship. Or what that per what that person who is now transitioned left us with, you know, or the lessons that that relationship taught us. I believe that sometimes her though gives us blinders, and then that's why we have to sit in that hurt, sit in that pain, and work through it. And be honest, we could say, I'm hurting, I'm lonely, I'm, I'm devastated. Um, and we need to deal with that. So at the end of it, we could see what was good about that marriage, what was the good about that circumstance. Because I think that when you try and run from pain, it just catches up with you. When you try to anesthetize it after, after, after you get out of the bed with that person, or after you stop, after you come down from the high or whatever, the pain is still there. And the Lord wants you to be whole and healed in every way today. And he wants you to know that he'll be with you in the pain. And he wants me to say today that you may not see it. You don't have to see it. But, but he will use this pain. Although he didn't cause it, he's a master at re recycling uh, pain and using what he needs and then discarding the rest. And he didn't cause that person to die because he needed something to use. No, no, no. God doesn't, God, uh, the, doesn't do that. He loves you too much to do that. He's so, he's too God enough. He's too God to do that. Instead, I believe that he he uses pain. He takes your pain and sorts through it and says, "What can I use from it?" And the Bible says all things are working together for, for the good. For, for, for the call according to his purpose. So if you are called by God, if you've been called out by God, all things are working together for the good. Every bad thing, every good thing, everything is working together for the good. Did it feel good? No. Did it 
did it did it hurt? Yes, it did. And would you go through it again? No. But know that he is going to to sort to sort through it and take what he can use and make something new. It's like compost. Um, I had a compost bin one time. I couldn't use it because it was too hard to keep up in the apartment. Uh, but if I had a garden or something and can use compost, uh, you take the the waste that is a, that you don't eat like or, or, orange peels and thing that thing on the on the celery that you cut off those leaves and everything that ought to be thrown away it gets put in the ground and used again and also um ho- horse Horse manure, which is basically horse poop. Um, It comes out of the horse. doesn't smell very good, but it's very nutritious for for the garden. And it helps the soil. It gives it nutrients to grow. Could it be that your pain recycled? is giving you nutrients to to grow just like manure that just a thought and, and I've learned in my life that God wastes nothing God doesn't cause everything but he doesn't waste anything. Sometimes life is just life and things just happen and there's no rhyme or reason why, but know that God in his divine wisdom will be using that thing for his glory. He will be using that thing for his glory. And it is just amazing to think about when you understand that God is using your pain for his glory and for his for his goodness. And um, I was watching Kelly Clarkson, and she was talking about her divorce from her husband. And she said, you know, I, he, she said, my relationship with my husband wasn't all bad. And there was some good that came out of it. I've got two children from it. I got, you know, he said, he said it was not bad. And sometimes when things like divorce or death happens, we just focus on the bad. We just focus on the hurt. And sometimes we just need to let things hurt we don't need to sweep over stuff we don't need to make it feel better let it hurt rascal flats my favorite country band in the whole wide world has a song called let it hurt um and sometimes we need to let it hurt because that's the only way we can heal. And I was thinking with God too. 
sometimes the talking, no, the healing is in the talking. Sometimes, because I, I've been in therapy when I was a child and whatever. Uh, sometimes, for me, what I've learned, the healing is in the talking. Sometimes the healing starts when you just learn how to get it out. Sometimes you don't need to solve it. You don't need uh, you don't need solutions. Sometimes you just need to, to speak it. And a lot of people, and a lot of people that are in pain refuse to speak about it. Give it a voice. If you want to scream, scream. If you want to. If you want to cuss, cuss. If you want to, whatever you want to do safely, do it. You need to get, you need to give voice to your pain. You need to give your pain an outlet. You need to say, I'm lonely. I'm angry, I'm bitter, and be honest, first with the Lord, then with yourself, and then you you may need to go to therapy, or go to a pastor, go to a, go to a friend, to say, I'm hurting. This is hurting, because I know there, sometimes, we've been told that uh, we need to find community and whatever, and I, um, and what I'm learning now uh, is community can be found wherever you are. Sometimes you don't have to look for a distinct group or whatever. Sometimes it's just calling a friend and say, I'm going through this. Or sometimes it's sending a voice note to a friend and say, I'm going through this. And sometimes your friends, the friend that you need to go to for this is not the friend you need to go to for that. Sometimes I found in my life, I, I I don't have a core group of friends. But instead of that, what God has done in my life, he gives me who I need at the time that I need it. He gives me what I need when I need it. So if I need to talk to a friend about this, he shows me the person that I could talk to about that. Um, If I need a friend to talk to about this, he shows me the person to talk to about that particular thing. And usually they are different people. And I've given him control over that part. And I think uh, sometimes we're afraid um, to let go and trust that God has got us and he loves us and we just are looking for this, for this group or that group or oh, we need these group of ladies and whatever or this group of men or whatever. And that's wonderful if you have that. But but remember, God gives you what you need when you need it. So if you ha- have had the same group of friends and you call them when something's up, great. 
if you have a group of caregivers that you trust, in my case, and you just want to unload on them, great. Um, if you, you know, whatever you need to do, if you need to write it down in a journal, do that. If you need to have a screaming session with the Lord to say, Lord, what's going on here? Do that. But give, if you need to sit in a therapist's office, in a pastor's office, do that. But whatever way you do it, you need to give voice to that pain. He will recycle your pain, yes. But first, before he can take what's good from it and use it, you need to process it. And you need to give voice to it. And give voice to the feelings behind it. And stop thinking that people are going to fix it. Or a relationship will fix it. I'm a big proponent of therapy. But therapy is is not designed to be a fixer. It's designed to be a guide to help you come up come up with strategies uh to deal with whatever. But it's not designed to fix it. There's only one per one person who can fix it and that's God. And he will he will give you tools, he will give you strategy. And if you and if you let him into your pain, he can heal it and make it brand new. And maybe he won't heal it all the way because he'll want to use parts of that. He'll want to recycle parts of that and make it new. He's the master recycler. And and you, one last thing, you may not know that he's using it. It may seem like this is for nothing or whatever, but you don't know who your pain could be helping. You have no idea who who's watching you and who is min- being ministered to you, being ministered to through your pain. You don't know what co what coworker is watching you go through cancer, but still come to work when you're not doing chemo and gaining strength from it. You don't know who's watching you preach on YouTube and watching your your all your challenges, but yet you're still here every week. Whether five people watch you, whether ten people watch you, whether 50 people watch you, whether 100 people watch you, whether 200, 300, a million, you're still here. You don't know who that's giving strength to. And that's the thing. You may not know how, what parts of your pain God is going to recycle and use again. Or he might use the whole thing, or maybe just properties of your pain that he's using again. But I'm telling you, because in my own life, he's using something 
from that thing, from that situation, from what you've learned. Thank you guys for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. Take care. God bless. See you next week.